Hey guys, we're wanting to record a little video here, just kind of walk you through filling out a fire report on Firehouse, just to give you some pointers and a few tips. So if you're not familiar, we're looking at our CAD sheet here on the right side of the screen. And I have went ahead and, and highlighted the address our run number over here on the right and then just for the uh, sake of this report uh, we have our dispatch time in route time arrive time and clear time the one I should have highlighted but didn't and I think I will right now if this will let me If I'm not mistaken, time received will be right here. That'll be the dispatch time received. Okay. So I have all that information there. One other thing that I have added that is not normally on here, I went ahead and grabbed the Latin long for our supplemental address and placed it in here just for record. So you're going to open Firehouse. Most likely an incident will pop up or you can open a new incident. Enter your alarm time here, which will be 20.03.42. This report has already been done, so I'm going to just give it a fictitious or, um, beginning there. The end will, will just stay the same. So here you will notice that the alarm time is red. That because it's, it thinks it's today. This is, of course, a fictitious report. So if we change this to yesterday, you'll notice that it will go to green. We'll just leave it like that for now. Uh, pick the correct station where you're at. And I usually like to tab through these. Okay, so one of the things that will pop up when you start a new one this window here, do you want to create a new record? Yes, you do. So you're going to pick the correct station that you're located in. Um, and, then, and then you'll just tab through. If this is a place that you have, have an occupancy ID, we have a pre plan for you. You can pull it from this list here. We do not have a pre plan for this. So. Uh, make sure your scene address, your type, and vicinity is correct. That's auto field. The only time you'll need to change that is if it's in the vicinity of, or uh, maybe an intersection uh, in front of, adjacent to, rear of. So here we're going to look over. It's 865. We're going to tab across. Pin up will come up and allow you to search. We'll just double click on that. Uh, address line 2 will be for your cross street we'll go down here to specific property use this was a resident of one or two family dwelling the incident it was a fire structure fire and it was a building fire dispatch notified time we'll go over here and look and it's 20.02.05. First arrival on the scene, we can look over and see that it's 20.08.47. There was no control time on the CAD sheet. If you know that, you can place it in there. If not, just leave it blank. And then we'll go to last cleared, which is highlighted over here as well. 2350-144. So we'll go to our actions taken. This is where you will, the three most important is what you want to put in there. So you'll put extinguishment by fire service personnel. You can put in as many as you want, but only the top three will print on report.
we'll do two here. Enter your shift here, how many alarms it was, which district it was in, 911 that was used, type of alarm. Now before I do type of alarm, I like to go to supplemental address because once you fill in type of alarm, it will automatically move over to units and personnel. We'll pull in our latitude, 897, tab over, 528957. Pick your zone, this was the main. County and township is automatically entered. Okay, type of alarm, this would be a multiple station response. Units and personnel, we'll go here to the add button. Um, this right here will automatically pull from the station that is selected up top. If you need to add a truck from another station, you can click the add button in this window and pull in well, I'll just show you, and you can go here and pull your other apparatus. We're not going to do that at this time, though. So we'll add. We're going to add Rescue 1 since that, those are the times we have highlighted. Your response code. We responded to emergency. We responded as fire. We were notified at 20.03.42, which is correct. We were en route, we need to change that. We were en route at 2005. On scene is correct. Cleared is correct. Back in service and cleared are generally the same time. You'll go over to the next tab in this window and personnel. We're going to go to add group. We're going to add from scheduling. Make this window a little bit bigger so you can see the whole thing. And so you'll have your three positions here. We'll go to this box and we're basically going to put on duty. And select OK. Now the only other thing we need to make sure is that the positions are correct in our scheduling to make sure that it pulls it incorrect. Right here they are. So we're going to save. And then we're going to add one more unit from our list. We're not going to fill out the whole thing. But just so I can show you how to go through and, and pull another unit. And we'll pull tanker 3. So we'll go to station 3, click down box, select tanker 3. They responded to an emergency as well they were a fire. Now the notify time will stay the same for everyone but the other times are the ones that you'll want to change. So we'll say tanker 3 was in route at 200507. They arrived at scene at 57 seconds they cleared the scene at 23.46.42. We'll fill in their personnel. Same as before. Make sure the positions are correct. And select save. So we need to go to the response area here. Now the loss at the present time is an estimate our best guess and we will say that this fire uh, just for the purpose of this module or this video we'll say that they had a five thousand dollar loss and we'll say that the property was valued at a hundred and fifty thousand a good place to get these numbers is from the tax assessor's website. I will include a link to that in the video description. Contents, we'll say $100. And then we'll say there was, I don't know, $45,000 value of contents. 
There were no casualties. Click your detector box. They had one smoke detector in this house. It did not alert occupants. It went over to the next field. There were no hazardous materials released. This is a single residence, so it's not a mixed use. Here we want to go ahead and add persons or entities involved. And I don't know for sure, but we're going to guess that over here this Burn Hardy is the last name. And see their name automatically pulls up if it's a repeating name sometimes. So we'll go ahead and yes, we'll select this. And of course you can see that that pulls in this information uh, from the previous report. Another reason why we want to make sure that we're accurate with our reporting information. Primary involvement type. We're going to put we're going to list that as occupant owner. And then if we have a callback number for them, which we should, I did not get it. Um, but you would want to put that phone number in here. We're going to make one up for the purpose of this video. It says five two five four five six seven. How about four five six one? We'll go ahead and save that information. Go over to our next tab in additional reports. Because we chose 111 up front, we have a few other tabs that we have to fill out in this section. So we'll sl simply click the fire button and see how many residential living units. This was one, it was a single family housing. Number of building involves would be one. On site materials or products is really only necessary um, in a larger maybe industrial or business type setting. Go to fire area, fire origin. This was in a it was in the living room. So sometimes you just have to select different tabs. So this was a common room right here, number 14. Select different tabs till you find the exact code that you want. Heat source was from a fireplace. So we'll select these until we find exactly what we want. So this would be hot ember or ash. Item first ignited would be wood. structural member or framing. Type of material first ignited would have been wood. So we're going to go with sawn wood including finished. Cause of ignition was unintentional. Factors contributing to ignition. If this was everything was purely accidental, a lot of times you may select none, but we challenge you to always look and try to find an appropriate description. And this was actually construction deficiency, the way the fireplace was constructed and built. Human factors, there were none. Everything's green. No other yellows or reds, so we'll save this module. Close it. Go to the structure fire module. 
The structure type was an enclosed building. Building status in normal use. This was a single story. Zero stories below grade. Your total square foot goes here, or if you have the dimensions, we're going to guess. I'm going to go with 1500. And the story of fire origin was one. Detectors or extinguishing, they were present. Detector type was a smoke detector. Detector power supply was a battery only. Detector operation. Fire was too small to activate detector. There was no automatic extinguishment system in place. Save this module and close. Go to dollar loss. The damage that is assessed will go against the buildings. If you have a vehicle that may have been damaged as well in a structural fire, you will do an exposure report on that, which we'll go over at a later date. If you know the insured amount in the insurance company, you would fill that out here. If you don't know it initially, you can always come back in and add at a later date. Your incident narrative, we're always going to start by auto-generating, which will pull up another window. We'll select the Generate Narrative button at the top right. It's going to pull in your address, um, your dwelling information, your arrival time, the names of the owner occupant, and it'll it'll pull in your initial actions, your on-scene units, and your in-service times. I always like to go in here, find a space, and and basically stick to the same pattern. But it, figure out what kind of notes you want to use and uh, just try to stick with it. Um, so you'll work on some notes being consistent with what actually happened. Um, a brief summary, any detailed information you can put in there. We also installed some smoke alarms in this house, so I'm going to add that to our notes here as well. So when we're done with our narrative, we'll hit OK. Go to Other. And here, we're going to add who made the report, who is the officer in charge, under authorization type. So memory making report for this scenario would be me. OK. Rank. Assignment. Save. Add a new one. Authorization type. Officer in charge. For the purpose of this report, we'll say that uh, that Hal Cook was in charge. We'll hit save. If this is a single station response, and you're doing this, you can click this add or update member making report authorization with the same information. So you can click once and get both actually. So that has been saved. We'll close this window. 
hit save we gotta go through spell check and the report has been saved and close and that's how you complete a fire report within firehouse any questions feel free to give me a call until next time